welcome to Believe That in Love. This is Claudia Suarez, and I want to remind you to look for us on Believe.Love, youtube.com slash Believe Loves You, and Believe iTunes.com and Believe Android.com. So don't forget to look for us in those sites, okay? Because we have a lot of great information in Believe.Love. Um, I want to talk in this section of health and wellness about six foods that foods that balance your hormones, okay, naturally for younger looking skin. It's so important. We all want to look younger. We all want to have beautiful skin. And today I'm going to give you those tips that I found, which is six main foods that you can take and you can eat in your diet and your so you can have that balanced diet. And I want to let you know that incredibly enough, um, what causes breakouts in our skin is testosterone. Yep. When people suffer acne, they, the problem there is testosterone. They're having an imbalance in their in their hormones and that's why they, they suffer acne or they have a lot of a lot of issues with their skin. So um, we found this New York-based uh, dermatology, um, Deborah Gelman, MD, who is share with us, uh, you know, these six tips or these six foods that can help us balance our hormones. If you take note, you know, today, these six foods will balance your hormones, which can plump up your skin. We all want to plump up skin. I mean, we want it beautiful, right? And also uh, get rid of those wrinkles, you know, start losing those wrinkles and looking better and even prevent acne. So if you do this, you'll prevent acne. So that'll be good. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start because I know it's, it's something that we all have to learn how to do in our diet. We have to take care of ourselves. And, you know, one of the things, most important things, is to um, just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. Um, you know that, incredibly enough, the food that's really, really good for you, one of the, I'm going to give you the number one, is quinoa. I don't know if you've tried quinoa, but I, I just recently started and so my fact, started last year and eating quinoa, finding uh, quinoa and preparing it for myself. And it's delicious and it's very easy to cook. You don't have to really do a lot of things to it. You just have to find recipes in the Internet and you will definitely do a great job with, you know, preparing quinoa. Um, this grain is popular, very popular nowadays. But the reason it's so popular is because, you know, it's great protein. You get great protein with quinoa. Not only that, you, you get magnesium, you get phosphorus, and also, you know, one of the things that quinoa does is it has, it's a low glycemic, it gives you a low glycemic level, not like other grains, which give you a high glycemic level, which brings your sugar up, and, you know, you know what happens. When your sugar goes up, it just creates all kinds of problems. So... It's really important for you to know that you need to take quinoa, half a cup of quinoa at least twice a week, okay, according to the, our dermatologist, and, and will ensure to get the best as far as, uh, you know, those perks of balancing your hormones. That's the number one food, quinoa. Okay, write it down. The second one, curiously enough, the second one is... Guess who? Guess what? Almonds. Almonds, ladies and gentlemen. Almonds are good for you as far as keeping your skin beautiful. Uh, your, your skin, sometimes I know it goes nuts. Sometimes you see a lot more wrinkles or it's kind of dry or sometimes it gets all kinds of issues, right? And some people do get a lot of issues with their, with their um, you know, with their skin. But almonds, um, which regulate, incredibly enough, it, they regulate your blood sugar. They regulate your blood sugar levels, so you won't um, increase insulin, right? This is what we found out. 
Um, also, what studies have proven that eating almonds shrinks the level of, you know, levels of male hormones like testosterone that can make your skin look drier and thinner. So if your testosterone, young men or men in general, if your testosterone is high, your skin will look drier and thinner, according to our research. So this is a recommendation, according to our dermatologist. 11 almonds a day, one serving size or more, is a great addition to your diet. So let's keep that in mind. Almonds will be good for you. Almonds will be good for you. Okay, now the next food or the next uh, that I'm gonna rec that, that our dermatologist recommends is avocados. They're great fats. Actually, avocados and other there are good fats like olive oil and coconut oil, which support a healthy level of cholesterol. Okay, they support the healthy levels of cholesterol. I'm gonna share with you. I was I eat avocados. I do. I do eat avocados. Not all the time, but I do keep them because they're also high in potassium. So you kind of have to keep it keep it uh, you know balanced. Um, in coconut oil, I was not really very aware of all the benefits of coconut oil. Now sometimes it's controversy because of course you know it is a fat that is is high level. Fat, it's a high level fat. But I think if you take it with moderation, it'll be okay. You know, I don't think you have to totally get rid of coconut oil because it does have its benefits. But anyway, according to our dermatologist, this will enable your skin to release and circulate the hormones it needs so it can stay healthy, okay? So this is what avocados do. Okay, this is, and also it will, give you a more plump look in your skin and also it will keep it from getting dry and dull. So this is what they recommend. Eat avocados, eat avocados, okay? Actually half, a, half an avocado, that's what they recommend, um, a day to get all those perks, to get your plump skin and you know, and uh, definitely because you have healthier fats, they beef up your skin, um, your skin cells. That's what it says, which helps prevent also sun damage because it has fiber, potassium, vitamin C, and E and lutein, okay? So avocados on your list of groceries, okay? <laughs> and, other, and other good um, fat, because I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, fats uh, also in salmon. So salmon is very good for the skin. By the way, I had already heard about it, but I didn't know how important it was to keep your hormones level for to keep a beautiful skin. Um, this is really good for your brain and heart as well because it contain, it's a hormone helper because it also contains omega-3 uh, fatty acids. So it's really good to, unlike avocados, to also include in your diet at least twice a week salmon. So there's so many ways to prepare salmon and it can be wonderful to eat and cook. You know, I've learned some, a few recipes myself. But you know, one recommendation that I'm gonna make because I have tried it myself, I, I try to find salmon that is wild cut, a wild, you know, it, wild, caught in the sea. In other words, it's not farm raised. That's what I meant. It's not farm raised because you know what? It's so important, it's really important to not, um, you know, fish is, is, is also very important that it's not raised. It's just like when they put hormones in chickens and in, in, in red meat, you know, cows. So it's the same thing with fish. We, got, we wanna find it fresh. The fresher that is, the, that is caught from the sea, wild cut, you know, wild, I mean wild cut, it's so important to, to really look at, at, that, uh, at that situation. But anyway, she says, the, our dermatologists, remember they come from these dermatologists, the six these, uh, suggestions, uh, it's an anti-inflammatory um, 
protein, okay? So it helps your skin, okay, from eruptions like acne, okay? Also aim, this is what she recommends, aim for four ounce servings of salmon twice a week. I need to do it twice a week. I don't do it twice a week, I do it once a week, but you know, at least I'm trying, you know, I'm trying. I have noticed a little bit, you know, my skin is not, it's, it's, it looks good, it's looking good. Eggs, okay, eggs are on the list. Eggs are on the list. For some reason, eggs are on the list. Okay, so if you're, a lot of people don't believe in egg whites because egg whites, sometimes they were very concerned about, uh, you know, your, you know, that they create a lot of issues with, um, with your cholesterol, HDL cholesterol. So a lot of people don't, don't like to, they're a little bit scared about egg whites. And, and there were a lot of misconceptions. Now doctors are now coming back and saying that it's not that bad. You can have your full eggs with your yellow in the middle. <laughs> and so it's important to your yolk, to take the yolk, because the yolk has a lot of good things that are good for us, okay, too. So it actually, the type, you know, your, your body needs it especially your, your hormones need it. Uh, and they create hormones, as a matter of fact. So it'll help you with um, a softer, supple skin, okay? And also the medical director of Midlife and Menopause Health Services uh, suggests and recommends eating just one egg, okay? One egg per day to get the goods without overloading on the rich, rich foods of and create cholesterol issues. So having one egg a day or maybe take, you know, in your diet during the week, you could have, you know, eat two eggs one day, maybe every other day you have an egg, but balance it out and, and uh, I think pretty much it'll help you. I eat eggs, I'm not too into, and my blood, uh, you know, my blood, uh, re re it was really good. All my, all my cholesterol levels were really good. So, you know, don't be afraid of eggs, you just be, just balance them out, okay? Also, another another vegetable or a vegetable that they that the, our dermatologist recommends is broccoli. Broccoli is really good for you. It really is, and it, of course, it does so many other things. But I didn't realize that it it, it helps you with the hormones, um, as well as spinach and Brussels sprouts. Okay. Most of us have heard a lot about um, you know the the, the, the leafy greens, we gotta remember the leafy greens. They are so important for us, okay? So Brussels sprouts, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sprouts, I'm sorry, are so important for, for our skin. But broccoli is comparable to the other ones, improves our liver, okay? Improves the health of our liver, and it brings uh, estrogen, estrogen levels. You know, it, it, it balances the estrogen level. So that's why it's important to, to have it in our diets. So there's the sixth, so there's number six, as far as the food that will help, the foods that will help balance your hormones naturally for younger looking skin. Younger looking skin, we all want younger looking skin. So they recommend to, to help you keep the levels up with broccoli with at least half a cup of dark leafy leafy greens per day half a cup half a cup is not a lot so if you have a little bit of spinach you have a little bit of broccoli you know brussels sprouts it could definitely help that beautiful skin and you can definitely have your hormones balanced so there's other tips that that, that you know they can give you as far as people that are going through other issues with with no, no, n their hormones not being balanced. There are other foods that you can use, but you can research that. But for now, I wanted to share this six, six foods in our health and uh, wellness section, uh, foods that can balance your hormones naturally for younger looking skin. So I hope these tips were good for you and, um, and that you really take note and that you look younger every day, <laughs> okay? Okay. Like I say, 
Hi, this is Claudia Suarez. Welcome to Believe That Love. And on money and business, we're going to talk about this topic, which I think is going to be so, so interesting for those people that are wanting to start a business or wanting to start their own life in a different direction, not just a job, but a business. And um, I, according to Forbes magazine, I found this really interesting topic on 11 places to find money to start a business, 11 places, okay? These are just tips for you so that you know uh, what to do as far as, you know, finding, finding, you know, a good place to, to basically look for money to start your business. According to Forbes, personal savings. Most people have personal savings one way or another. Um, if they really want to change their lives and they want to, you know, basically start uh, a business, um, they will definitely, um, you know, where well, they will definitely start saving. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is one thing that most people don't do. I mean, Sometimes if you want to start a business, start saving money. But before you make a big, big um, decision, you got to save money, enough money, so you have money to pay all your bills, okay? That's really important. Why? Because you're not going to have a salary from anywhere else if you're going to dedicate yourself 100% to your business. So sometimes if you're going to take away, if you're going to find money in your personal savings, then you need to be um, careful how you, you know, set up all the, the system and definitely uh, watch out for all your expenses like mortgage and insurance needs. Uh, you know, you have, to have, uh, you have to have them aside so that way you won't be in a, in a situation where you're going to, you know, you're going to have a lot of uh, stress because you're not being able to pay your bills and you took all your savings to start your business. So, that's one, one recommendation that force makes. Another thing, another place to find money to start your business is actually friends and family. There are people that basically have made excellent businesses coming from friends and family, from borrowing money from friends and family. Um, you have to put like, you know, everything in writing. Have a clear picture of what you want to do and put everything in writing uh, even for your friends and family, say, you know, let me borrow so much and I will give it back to you with this percentage and so forth and so forth because you don't want things to get out of hand and then have problem with the family. So that, that way they see your seriousness, right? Your seriousness and the fact that even though you let me borrow that money, I'm going to pay you back, you know, and that way you put it in writing and that way everything will definitely be on the clear. And there's have been cases where people have borrowed money from friends and family up to $120,000, you know, and they've made it with that money and they made their business successful. So, so don't shy away from asking family and friends, you know, because basically, you know, you can do it. You can do it. Another place uh, is banks and credit unions, according to Forbes. Uh, banks are not always easy, you know, as you know, it's not always easy. And sometimes you, you know, they lend you, they can lend you money, but you have to have a clean credit. Okay. And definitely a um, good record as far as making payments with credit cards and so forth. So, you know, your first stop should be a bank that is familiar with your own, in, with your industry depending on what your industry is, always research a bank that is familiar with, with uh, what you want to do or one that's having a, it's a, has a soft spot, okay, uh, for small business lending. So that's one recommendation that they do as far as uh, looking, you know, one of the places to look money to start your own business. Another place is angel investors and venture capital uh, firms. Um, this is a tricky thing because, you know, most of the time, uh, investors, as you know, um, sometimes when people make investments for, you know, in your company or in your ideas, they'll wanna, you'll, they want a percentage. They want a percentage from you. And so you have to be very um, 
It's very important that you consult with SBA, Small Business Investment Company Program. So that way you know, you know, because you would have to present a business plan, you know, a very, you know, very clear business plan. Um, this type of investors, they want to equity, partial equity, and ownership. So there's a way that you can look for money there, but, you know, you have to definitely be considering what other things you're going to give up, okay? And other um, uh, way that you can find money is corporate programs. There are corporate pr programs out there. Some big businesses offer small business startups support as well, okay? For uh, instance, according to Forbes, uh, Michelin North America, based in Greenville, South Carolina, has provided low interest financing, loan ranges from $10,000 to $100,000. Especially for minority owned and disadvantaged businesses, including women owned firms, um, they're very open, okay, for, for those things. So consider that, consider it, okay? Grants. Grants are so important. You know, there are grants out there all over the place that some of them you don't even, you don't even have to pay. You don't even have to pay. Can you believe it? So, you know, just go into the website, uh, grants.gov, and look into it for information. You know, there are more than a thousand federal grants, okay, programs that you can look into. And you know what? Female entrepreneurs um, may want to connect with one of the SBA Women's Business Centers around the country, according to Forbes. Okay, these centers provide state, local, and private grant information to women interested in going into business for themselves with nonprofit or for-profit organizations. See, this is really important, so look into grant.gov. Okay, also, this is really interesting. This is really interesting I, that I want to share with you. I really want to share with you this because it's actually, you know, is ground funding. I don't know if you've heard of this ground funding and ground lending sites. How do these work? These are virtu virtually fundraisers, uh, fundraising campaigns generally raise small sums, okay, you raise small sums, but you never know, you know, money may show up and people may back you up because this is, this is the king of crowdfunding is Kickstarter. So look for that because Kickstarter is a place that you can get this going uh, where it's easy to get started, okay? But, you know, one of the things that, that you can do is, is you can share the, a video, okay? You can share a video and you target dollar amount in your deadline. And from there you start raising money, raising money, raising money, raising money from family and friends. And of course you have, they have to share your video and so forth. And that way you can get that, um, you know, you can get that money. You never know. That would be another place to look for money. Okay, um, another thing that's good or that Forbes recommends is roll over as business startups. I don't know if you know about this, but here is, you, you, you know, the use of your 401k. Some people have 401ks, they have built 401ks, that's wonderful. So individuals retirement account, that's what it is, or other retirement funds to finance a business without occurring taxes or internal revenue services penalties. So this is another way that you can, you know, look for money. So that's good. And also, some people have their homes, you know, their homes, so they can do the equity, home equity loans, um, and, and they can borrow money, you know, from their homes. If you have a substantial equity build up in your home, then you could always borrow against your home and get that money for your startup business, okay? So it's a good option. Um, you have to kind of really look into it. It's a good option, but you have to look into it. Okay, so um, the other one and the last one of that, of the of this eleven ways to find money for, to start your business is 
credit cards. Yes, I know credit cards is a, a good way of definitely finding, you know, your your using your the plastic. <laughs> okay, to it's a risky choice, as you know. It's a risky choice, uh, but most cards have double-digit interest rates and balances that roll over month to month. So that's the only thing. But there's money there too. If you have a good credit, and if you are at least in, you know, good credit standing, you could always borrow money from there too. So just remember, there are 11, 11 ways, 11 places to find money to start your business. We'll go over again. Personal savings, friends and family, banks and credit unions, angel investors, and venture capital firms, corporate programs, okay, grants, uh, ground funding and uh, ground lending sites, uh, rollover as business startups, which is the 401k, home equity loans, okay, and the last one, credit cards. So there's always a way to find money. The only thing is that you have to be smart about it and know what you need to do to get going. Choose out of those 11 or choose more than one place to find money. You can always go from one place to another and be successful in, in doing your own business. Okay? So just believe and love and do the best you can to start your own business. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my other topic, which is true success. Welcome to Believe That Love and True Success. This is Claudia Suarez. Okay. I'm going to give you the top five qualities of high successful people. You always look around and you think, oh my gosh, you know, this person just seems like everything works so easy for them, you know? works so easy for them and, and, and people don't know how they do it. You know, they really don't. And, and, and now we have these five qualities of high successful people. And it's not easy. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, anybody can do it. Or some people say, oh, I can't do that. But I'm going to share with you. If you really want to bring success into your life, like all of us do, you should cultivate, you know, you should cultivate. It's like doing a garden. Okay, when you, when you have a garden, you cultivate it. You basically say you put water in it, you water it, you do all kinds of stuff to cultivate that garden, right? Well, this is the same thing when you want to be a successful person. You have to cultivate it. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind you this because I found this and, and I thought it was really interesting, this quote. And it says like this, if you live your life as most people do, right, you will get what most people get. Uh, if you settle, you will get a settled life. If you give yourself your best every day, your best will, be, will give back to you. Okay? Here are the traits that highly successful do or cultivate. I'm going to share with you this and see how many do you have of these traits. I'm going to also look at it myself. Do I have it or don't have it? So I'm going to share with you um, this, this uh, the number one, the number one is drive. You know what? Drive, drive is not that easy. Drive is not that easy to have because of everyday stuff that goes on in life, Okay. Sometimes it's hard to get that drive going, you know, because you think, oh, my gosh, I have to do this. I have to do that. But you have to cultivate that. You have to build it inside of you. Drive is something that you build inside of you. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It comes from building with meditation, with, you know, um, prayer, you know, with talking to people that can motivate you. So drive, you have to build it. You have, you have to have that determination. That's what drive means, you know. Um, 
to work harder than most and make sure things get done. So that's what drive is. Um, you pride yourself on seeing things getting completed and you take charge when necessary. That's what pride, and that's what drive is. So, you know, you drive yourself with purpose and align yourself with excellence. This is what it says here. So it's important, it's important to, to have drive. Number two is self-reliance. Self-reliance. What does self-reliance mean? Um, you can shoulder the responsibilities. You take, in other words, you do the work, you do the job, you, 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 you can shoulder the responsibility and be accountable with what you're doing. That's what it's saying here. Um, you make hard decisions uh, and, start, and stand by them, okay? To think for yourself is to know yourself, okay? To think for yourself is to know yourself. So it's really important to do that, you know? Be confident. I bet about what you know about yourself. Self-reliance. Willpower is number three. Willpower. What is willpower? What is willpower? Okay, what is willpower? You have the strength to see things through. That's, that's what willpower means. That's what willpower is. You have the strength to see things through. You don't procrastinate. That's one of the things that I think is harder because we all do that. We procrastinate and procrastinate. I'm going to do this and then, well, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe, you know, because we get so involved in our day-to-day -day life and our day-to-day -day jobs because we have to do what we have to do. And we have dreams that sometimes we procrastinate because sometimes things get in the way. But we got to learn to go after what we want, you know. When you want it, you can make it happen. This is what it says here, and it's so true. The world's greatest achievers are those who have stayed focused on their goals and been consistent in their efforts. So let's be consistent. Let's be consistent in our efforts. That's what's important, to be consistent in our efforts. Be consistent. It's so important to be consistent. Um, patience, number four. Patience. I think that's probably the hardest one. I don't know about you. You know, it, one of the questions that I, is, is how many do you think you have of these traits, of these qualities? And one of the things that I think is harder for a lot of people, is being patient. We want things to happen fast, you know, and we have to go little by little. It's not the same all the time, but you gotta go little by little, okay? So, um, patience means sometimes letting go. You let it go, you do what you have to do, and then you let it go. Whatever is gonna work out, is gonna work out. Whatever is not gonna work out, is not gonna work out. So we have to be patient sometimes for things to come through. And put yourself goals long-term, not short-term. I know I've done that in the past. I do myself short-term goals. And sometimes the month goes by, and then another month goes by, and nothing happens. <laughs> and you're going, maybe it was too short for what? The big picture I had, the big goal I had. So, you know, it's, it's really important to, to, to be patient. And... One of the things that, that are, is number one, is number one, uh, is integrity. This is number five, okay? Number five is integrity. Is integrity. This should not have to be said, really, because, you know, um, like they say, honesty is the best policy for everything that we do. So this is what I'm saying. You know, if you, if you really want people to believe in you and to do things for you and to really say, you know, you have what it takes, you know, then you have to have integrity. And these are 
qualities that high successful people have. In order for people to believe in you, you have to have integrity. Even if they trust you with their money, you know, you have to have integrity. You have to prove them integrity. These are only five, but I can tell you that there's much more. I can tell you there's much more. I would go further to say that you have to have passion. You have to have optimism. And let's not forget, let's not forget self-confidence. Self-confidence is so important. Self-confidence is so important. And sometimes it's really, really hard to build your self-confidence. Um, but in order to be successful, you have to feel confident about yourself and who you are and what you can do in life. And have peace. Have peace of mind. And peace will bring you confidence as well. Um, you have to trust yourself. You have to really trust yourself. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You have to trust yourself. And when you have that unbreakable trust in yourself, you know, because we all have it, you know, somewhere deep inside of us, we have that unbreakable trust in ourselves, then you are a step closer to success. That's reality. I wish all of you, and I hope that these five steps have helped you in some way, and that you can go in and search more for no, more steps to be successful. And being successful is not always having money, okay, or being famous. It's part of it because I think it goes with it, but it's also feeling good about what you're doing in life and feeling good about what you're doing your every day, you know, feeling good about your job, feeling that that's what makes you successful, feeling good about what you're doing with your life. So thank you for being part of, you know, true success, this section. And I hope that some way these five qualities of high successful people have helped you. Thank you.